thanks, John, for making the time to chat to me today. Thank you. Good to see you again. I am I'm really interested in your thoughts on digital marketing for our show. And so today we're going to specifically talk about marketing um, from both an agent and a marketing person's perspective and also um, delve into like what your thoughts on digital media mm. and social media and the like. Very good. Looking forward to it. So uh, what are your thoughts on what we have today versus when I first worked for you back in 2006? Yeah. You know, the, the difference in what the agent has in their digital toolkit. I still think it's underutilised and I think people kind of gravitate towards bits and pieces. Some people are great users of REA and Domain, the digital platforms, but they're not so good on some of the other apps that it can be used. Um, some are great on social media, others kind of have a, have a blind spot around social media. And I think that all things technological, you, can't, you don't need to use everything, but you need to be open to finding out what everything can do for you. Yeah. So I, I speak to a lot of agents, so you, you know, if you're 40 plus probably, you, you probably didn't grow up with an iPad and, and, and no. the social media and that sort of stuff. And so it's easy. I caught someone the other day saying, I was coaching them, one of our agents, and he said, I'm not into the social media stuff. I said, that's a story you're telling yourself and it's real today, but mm. you've got to get into it because otherwise the other people around you that are competing for your business are going to get into it. And customers nowadays like keeping an eye on agents and properties and what's happening in areas based on social media. And there's a misconception which I pull, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, are people over the age of 60 on social media? And they are, because they actually have their iPads and they will scroll at a slower pace and they want to stay connected to friends and family and it's a great way, you know, great medium and channel for them to do that. So I, I think social media, particularly Facebook and, and I suspect Instagram, mm. are quite common and in the personal usage to people that are 50 plus, 60 plus, I agree. Yep. However, in the workplace, if you spoke to most real estate agents that might even be watching this and saying, yeah, let's say the average audience was 55 that you was talking to and you said, do you effectively utilise social media to promote your properties and promote your business? The answer is no. no. And I agree with you because that's all my clients, like the majority of them are in that age range because they come to us and they go, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Y your team, could you yeah. just do it for me? So yeah, I agree. But look, even if you utilise a service like yours and you outsource it, which I think is a great idea because again, you can't do everything. And some people have that passion and touch about doing it. Others need to get an expert in, but you still need to be across it, aware of it, interested in it. So even though I'm not personally into Facebook and Instagram, again, I follow sites that inspire me. So. Um, you know, it could be quotes you know, that I can use for coaching and training and just insights. It could be uh, architectural sites that I'm following, what are the latest trends in new developments. So you may not be an avid user yourself to your own social database, but even as a business tool, it's unarguable you have to be in that space. Yeah, and because people like you mentioned um, your multi-platform, you, you know, when you, uh, you, make, you might watch a movie, um, so I did this uh, yesterday, I watched a movie, but then I find myself going to Wikipedia, you know, to research the actors, and then I read around that topic and around that subject, and we get really immersed in information, and you know, and it's like more than the one experience. We use multiple platforms for different 100%. elements to build that. Hundred percent. No, no, I, I agree with you, and, and I'm the same. Like, I, if I am watching the big screen, not not on my phone or iPad, they'll say something. I'll say, "What does that word mean?" I'll go to, I'll research the word. Um, and, and I'll say, oh, how old's that actor? And you know, what other movies have they done? You're right, I, I find it's just critical. What about marketing people? Because there's a lot of resources and help uh, coaches in the industry that um, help on the sales side. And I've always thought of marketing and sales for real estate. It's really the yin and yang. And there's not many resources um, or, you know, there's still um, a lot of opportunity for people like me and my, you know, cohorts to raise the, the bar on knowledge and training. So um, how do you structure or, tr or train your marketing well, look, staff? I think, I think let's put us aside just momentarily because we're a bigger firm than most maybe that are watching in terms of the number of offices and, and perhaps the infrastructure we have but I'll talk about it in a minute. Let's just talk to the individual that's watching here. Either you're bloody good at social media, you've got a touch of marketing and angles and what to do and how to say it or you're not. If you are, and there are some very good people at it, great, go for it, do it. If you can do it all, and if you've got a particular strength on it, maybe that's good. 
Most aren't, therefore you've got to say, well, I either stay out of that game or I hire an expert. I would say you hire an expert. Mm -hmm. So there's a girl on the northern beaches that I know very well, Lisa Novak, and she works for Novak Properties. Oh, yes, I know Lisa. Very successful. We're doing the, the ride, the, the digital ride across Thailand together. Oh, okay, so, cool. Yes. So, so, so um, Lisa, I think, is extraordinary at social media and the way she utilises Facebook, predominantly to sell her properties. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that most of her listings have a short period before they hit the major portals on hers and she's getting tremendous cuts through and selling them before. Yeah. And one of her propositions to the client is, why don't you give it to me for a fortnight and, and we'll see if we can sell it on Facebook for a great price and if not, we'll then go to REA and sign boards and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the off-market listing off -market. Is, is, you know, is, has the, very much aligned with social media where, and, and database, so you mustn't forget the email database, but those two mechanisms to um, you know, test the waters, Correct. see what the pricing you know, um, perception is for that particular property before you then go to a full 100%. campaign. So Lisa, for me, is an example of someone who's very comfortable in front of the camera. She knows what to, to get. And I'll, I'm going to say it's the wrong term, but it's down and dirty. It's very authentic. Mm -hmm. She doesn't get wonderful camera crews like we have here with lighting. She virtually walks through with a camera and says, hey, guys, have a look at this. This is a great beachside apartment, needs a bit of work, have a look. It's very effective. Yep. So you've got to just you've got to pick your mark. And some of our guys, I would say, those that are really strong users of let's call it Instagram and Facebook to promote their properties in there, I would think that sixty to seventy percent of them do it themselves mm -hmm. and very, very nicely, many of them. Yep. And I'd say thirty to forty percent hire a consultant, expert, and both have great outcomes. But it really depends in what is your passion, what are you really good at? Can you be honest enough with yourself about do I need help here or not? Mm -hmm. Um, and it could be you start off doing it yourself because if you're an agent sitting there saying I don't have a huge budget, I'm not writing half a million yet, I'm writing 150 to 200. Mm -hmm. And you've got a bit more time because you've only got a couple of clients. And, and you time. may not have the capacity, you do have the time and you may not have the financial resource to actually outsource it. Mm. <laughs> but then you might go from selling two a month to six or seven a month at which point you might say well, I need to now step it up and, and delegate it. Yep. So I think you've just got to be honest with yourself about what can you cope with and what are you really good at. And it's very technical, um, a lot of people assume, because we use, they, they've made the same assumption with marketing for years, that because we're bombarded with it and we see it and we can touch it and experience it, that it's, it must be super easy and happens in a, you know, a you know, wink of an eye. But, um, so my challenge in the industry is to lift the game on um, paid advertising, yeah. so that's um, taking some of the budget or from the portals but uh, realigning it a bit across multiple digital mediums putting it into google ads and putting mm -hmm. it into SEO. social media ads yeah so um so paid advertising it's so basically we have these audiences and we can build our databases within facebook um and and as soon as somebody visits your website we can kind of um, tag them and follow them around the web, which is right. the remarketing. Yeah. Um, but that's like a whole world that people still haven't kind of cottoned on to. That's where you need the expertise, for yeah. sure. Look, I, I think capturing basic content, if you are quite adept at, at digital and using cameras and stuff, I think it's actually not that hard yeah. um, for most. <laughs> but, but actually then, so where does the content go? Well. Some people say, well, um, I put on my Facebook and I say, well, that's interesting. I had a look, you got 14 followers, you know, so it's probably not going to go far. However, the retargeting, search engine optimization, uh, Google AdWords, but again, if you're writing 150K, you may not be able to, you might have a small budget, but not a big one. If you're selling 15 a month, you've got the capacity and you, you probably need to really boost that up and turbocharge it. So from my perspective, I think, um, yeah, it's, it depends on where you're at in, in, the, in the growth cycle, but you've got to start looking at, but I would start, see one of the things is, someone could probably watch this interview and, and a number of your other ones and feel overwhelmed and confused. Just start small. Yeah. So if all you start by doing now, go to Lisa Novak, have a look at what she does, try and do one or two yourself, and post them to your own Facebook account and Instagram, even if you only have 14 followers. Just test it, get good at it. Then all of a sudden you might end up with 144 followers, and you might be getting better at it. And then all of a sudden you sell a property off the back of it. Someone says, oh, I saw, it, saw the property on Facebook, can I see it? So don't be afraid to start small and test. Don't be afraid to engage experts mm -hmm. like yourself. If you have the wherewithal and the budget to do it, that's good too. But just, just test, don't get overwhelmed. Actually have fun with it. Yes. Um, go and follow some interesting sites. Um, you know, not just leases, but there's a number, you know, we've, Stefan Bertrand in our ride office does great work, as does his colleague Michael Dowling. Alex Mintorn at Warunga up near UML. Mm -hmm. 
Fantastic. And, and, and they, in the main, do it themselves, but they've developed a passion and a enthusiasm for it and it comes across. So you've kind of got to you know, balance all that up and work out where are you in this social media, but you can't be out of it. You've got to be in there somewhere. It just yeah. depends on how deep do you want to jump in and do you want to jump in yourself or do you want to get an expert to do it for you? Yeah. And they should, you know, shouldn't feel bad about being overwhelmed because I've been doing this for over 20 years now and I'm constantly having to test and try things out and, yeah. you know, and, and the, the goalposts move continually, the platforms change continually. Sure. So I, I love the fact that you're saying give it a go, jump in, don't be afraid to press buttons and, you know, put a bit of budget and see yeah. what happens and learn. It's a constant, some constant our, learning. Mill, some of our top people, they do a post and they do a $10 boost in the past, I think it's now gone up a bit because they've had great success with it. But they'll say, oh, we put 10 or $20 into a boost on, on Facebook or, or social. And they just started small. And all of a sudden they spread their reach and they got more followers and, and their content got better. So yeah, you, very good strategy, start small. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time today. Pleasure. Really appreciate answering all my questions. Good and I'll chat you. to you again soon. Thanks, Mel, thank you. <laughs>